Welcome to Conference USA Media Days, coming your way from the Baylor Scott and White Sports Performance Center in Frisco, Texas, just across the street from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters and Practice Facility. I'm Ron Thulin. Yesterday, we talked about teams from the West. Today, we go to the East. We'll be talking to all seven coaches from the East, along with two players from each squad, and we hope to have a good time today. And joining us first, the Charlotte 49ers and their new head coach, Will Healy, in his first year. Well, good to have you part of the conference, my friend. Glad to be here. It's been awesome this week. I tell you what, this is, a, this is the dog and pony show, but it's fun to do. I get it. Also joining us, a couple of preseason All-Conference USA candidates, Benny LeMay, running back, second team All-Conference USA, also a Doak Walker watch list candidate this year. And we're also joined by Alex Highsmith, also conference preseason Conference USA, and he is on the Bednarik watch list. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Coach, coach goes first, guys. Okay, I don't make the rules, all right? <laughs> so, you know, Will, your first year, you come from Austin P. What attracted you to Charlotte? Well, I think, number one, it was a great place to move my family. Uh, my wife and I love living there. We've got a, a five-year-old, almost five-year-old, and then a six-month-old. So we thought it'd be a great place to raise our kids. Uh, I, I think the potential and the ceiling for our program is as high as any I've ever seen. Uh, you know, you, you've got unbelievable facilities. You've got a university that, to me, matches what you want in the football program, and that is we've got to get the word out. We're continuing to grow. It's a really fast-moving and, and uh, growing university. It's beautiful. Uh, there's so many things to sell. Great recruiting area. I could hire the staff that I right. wanted to be around. It was a no-brainer for me. Well, one of the things you said is you must build a new identity with the players. Explain that. Well, I think you've got to – you got to create a new brand within itself too. You know, you, we, we've got to make sure that we are relevant in our in our city, and that we are the, you know, one of the biggest shows in town in right. Charlotte. We got to fill that stadium to create a demand to build build on. And uh, but from a player perspective, anytime there's change with the staff, uh, I think you you do the culture is going to change, the identity is mm-hmm. going to change, and you just got to make sure that what we're doing in year one is something that can sustain and last and, and, and stay consistent. I want to pick up on that because I read an article about, you said Charlotte is not relevant in its own city. Got to make sure we get more people to the games, get in front of community members to get the program to the next level. What did you do to try to achieve that this year? Well, we talked, you know, one of the questions that I got was, how do you get students to games? And in my opinion, these are the best ambassadors Mm -hmm. for students. They sit next to, you know, hundreds of them every day in class. And if you will go introduce yourself, shake a hand and and become friends with them, then they'll come watch you play. I mean, there is always a, you know, a a Dallas Cowboys game or a Carolina Panthers game. So relationships mean a lot in, in in, in college football. And so we've got to develop relationships in the community where people want to pull for us personally. And then I think the brand you put on the field and the experience they have makes them want to come back. Well, let's talk uh, about one thing that really stood out. You had practices at 530 in the morning. Yeah. His wife is obviously a saint with two little she ones is. doing that. She is. Um, but you also said that the players bought into everything you asked them to do. They did everything with energy, with enthusiasm, with a good attitude. But the initial reaction to 5.30 practice, what was that like? And how did they progress? My reaction was probably worse than their reaction. Because <laughs> you're not a morning person. You know, and, and, and as we were trying to get to the, to the schedule during the day, it, I wanted everybody to have a chance to be evaluated. And that was the only time we had right. where everybody could be there. It wasn't some, you know, Newt Rockney toughness deal. I mean, it, it was – that was really the only chance we could get everybody together. So – I was worried about me and, and our staff oversleeping as much as I was these guys. Uh, it, was a, it was a grind, but I'm telling you, there weren't but one or two morning practices, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, where I, I, was, I, I left the practice field and felt like, uh, I don't know if we were really prepared for right. this morning. I mean, we had the most energetic, enthusiastic, passionate practices at 5.30 in the morning, and they did it consecutively. Uh, very impressive, and uh, I think we learned a lot. We, we came together very well during that time. All right, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Let's talk about the offense. First of all, is there clarity at quarterback? No, there's not. But we've got good options, uh, and I you think have three good options. Yeah, we got we've got very good options. So uh, I think fall camp will be big. Uh, I think each of them bring their own different um, strengths, and and so we we feel good about the guys we have in the program. We can definitely win with the guys that are there. I think it just depends on how do they lead our team, what type of face of the program are they, and. 
who's the most consistent? Well, one of the things that when you look at the numbers and you look at the players coming back, and I think it's a fair statement, you have a solid wide receiver core coming back. You look at players like Victor Tucker, mm-hmm. All-Conference USA freshman team, also Rico Arnold. What do those two need to up their game this year? I mean, I don't, I don't think the, the weight of the world's on their shoulders. Uh, I, I think they have to be all around great wide receivers, whether it's the perimeter blocking, whether it's, you know, catching a, a hitch route and, and getting some yards after the catch. Uh, but just be consistent, you know, and and uh, and be a team player. I think that's – I coached wideouts for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm passionate about uh, – I think – the way your wideouts play is very indicative of what type of offense you'll have and what mm-hmm. type of success you'll have. So we got to be all around great players and team players, and, and those guys obviously have some athletic ability that can, can make big plays. You talk about the offensive line. You have Cameron Clark obviously coming back, Jalen Fisher coming back. You have to replace some starters. But when I go back and look who played last year, you do have experience on the line where guys can step up and start, correct? Yeah, I feel great about our offensive line. Uh, I, I think that – We've, we'll have some competition probably at one of the t- at the at the other tackle position, uh, but I, I think they're very well coached. I you know I think Alex Atkins is one of the best in the game, and I th- I've watched those guys come along and develop and buy into him and, and their relationship with him. So uh, I feel great about our offensive line, and we're going to need them because we're going to mm-hmm. run the football. And uh, you know I know Benny's counting on those guys, so he better be <laughs> taking them out to eat dinner a couple extra times before we start camp. Oh, Benny, we're going to talk to you about that now. Your defense, you inherited defense. That was one of the best, not only in Conference USA, but also in the country. Now you've got to continue that trend. That's a, a, a pretty big challenge. Yeah, I think Glenn Spencer did a, a great job last year on defense. Mm-hmm. They, those guys play really hard. Uh, they've got really good talent on defense. So we inherited a program you know, where our defense had some swag about themselves. So we look to continue to do that. I, I think the schemes are a little different. Uh, our players have – uh, have been really good in spring practice and in the off season, where we'll continue to harp on those same things that they may, they had a lot of success on last year. In the secondary, do you have some questions there? Because you've got some great players, obviously returning in the secondary. You got Ben DeLuca, DJ Anderson, a couple of guys. But what about the secondary right now? I don't think we have a question. I think we've got great depth, and so the question is, where does everybody fit in? But you know, the questions I would have were, you know, do you have enough guys? Do you have two corners? Yes, we've got good depth in the mm-hmm. secondary. The question is, who's going to be the nickel? Who's going to play, you know, boundary safety, field safety? Uh, but we've got some really good personnel to help fill those positions. Well, let's talk to the players for a little bit. Benny LeMay, obviously, second team All-Conference USA. Last year averaged 102 yards a carry. This conference's top returning rusher. Your goals for this year, you had an incredible season last year. All-purpose yards, also one of the tops in Conference USA. But what do you do to take the next step? Um, really just stay consistent. Um, you know, I, you know, we got a great offense. We got a great scheme. You know, we got a lot of guys coming back on the offensive line. And uh, um, like we were saying earlier, you know, Cam Clark and all uh, Jalen Allen, all those senior guys coming back. So really just, you know, about my game, you know, just – really just staying consistent and, and, and doing what I can to produce more for the team. Well, your second all-time leading rusher in Charlotte history and a couple of highlights of you coming up here. you got to fix that ball security. Look at that thing. Well, look at that. It is, swing. isn't it? <laughs> we got to get that fixed. I apologize, <laughs> Benny. If we'd known yeah. that, I wouldn't have run he it. Can't, you know? He can't help I coaching no matter where you go. Yeah, but you know what? It's details. All right, it's it, details. It, right. Any coach, like a wide receiver coach, as, as Coach was mentioning, they're going to have those details down. You know? Yes, sir. But you had a great, you know, over 2,100 yards, second most uh, rush yards in, in Charlotte history. When you look back at your career, how special is it? Or are you going to wait to do that to get to the next level? Yeah, I'm, de- I'm definitely going to probably look, look back, um, you know, after it's all said and done. You know, I'm just focusing on the season right now, trying to, you know, um, really just focus on what we, what we can do and uh, get out, go get this championship. Okay, 5.30 practice. What was it like? Now, don't, now I know we, the coach mm-hmm. sitting next to you. Be honest. 5.30 practice. It wasn't my favorite. Um, well, he's giving you the skunk guy yeah. already, just for the record. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm not. It, was yeah. I, listen, it, it wasn't my favorite either. It definitely wasn't my favorite. Yeah. Um, it was hard, but, you know, it definitely, looking back, um, they're gonna, we're going to look back in a couple of years and say, you know, it was really something that, you know, we definitely take pride in doing. And, um, you know, it, I think it's going to make us better, actually, for the, for the team. I would agree with that. Now, there are a number of great stories in Conference USA, and Alex Highsmith is one of those. Came to uh, Charlotte as a walk-on, finally got a scholarship in 2017. What drove you to keep going from a walk-on to now one of the stars of the team? Uh, well, you know, there's really two things that really, I feel like, motivate me. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, 
um, I follow Jesus Christ, and that's what really he motivates me to, um, you know, just to play for him. You know, my hashtag, I like to live by this hashtag audience of one, hashtag L1. And so just really, you know, playing for him, can, you know, God has given me, blessed me uh, with the ability to play this game. So, you know, just playing it all for him and, and also um, for my family uh, because, you know, being a walk-on, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, they, they didn't have to pay for school anymore. And so that's just something, you know, I came in, just wanted to um, prove people wrong. You know, I just, I knew that uh, I would be able to, to play at this school. And so it was just, just wanted that to, you know, to, that really drove me to just keep, keep, keep grinding, just, you know, keep my head down and just, you know, be the first one in the building, be the last one to leave. And so just, um, just really outwork everybody and just, you know, show people that, um, you know, I can play. Well, you almost doubled your total tackles from 2017 to 2018. We'll take a look at some of the defensive highlights also. The standard was set last year for this defense. Just because there's a coaching change, that standard doesn't change, though, does it? No, sir. No, sir. We live by the gold standard. That's what we live by. So, and Coach Hill's done a great job, you know, of just setting that standard, you know, starting as soon as he uh, came in, in December. And so it definitely um, it's definitely paying off for us so far. Okay, tell me about the dunk can. <laughs> the dunk can. Uh, so uh, that was something, you know, uh, Coach West, our defensive coordinator, um, you know, um, implemented for us in the spring in spring ball. So basically, you know, if we get a turnover or you know, like an intercession, fumble recovery, um, he, they want us to, you know, take it take it uh, to the end zone or just run, run however far with it. And then someone from the sideline will bring a trash can uh, <laughs> up to the sideline and uh, basically you just do whatever dunk you want to do. So some guys just did a little windmill, some guys just do a tomahawk. So <laughs> it's just a fun way, you know, to, to celebrate and really um, get the juices flowing. And like, that's another way that, you know, we really uh, brought a lot of energy to our practices is by, you know, implementing things like that. Brings me back to my youth in Pittsburgh. That was my basketball hoop. <laughs> well, there, there's, there's two things. Yeah. The, the dunk can is only cool if you create turnovers, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and the other thing about it is we got to work on some of the dunks that we yeah, had. Yeah, we do. The they were weak. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if we do that on the big stage, you know, we, we're going to be yeah. in some trouble. So we got to work on our dunks in the yeah. offseason. What question for you, Coach, before we wrap things up? I've been asking all the coaches around the conference about this. The targeting rule right now, they're going to use replays. Good thing? How are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's a great thing. Uh, these guys work really hard to get 12 guaranteed opportunities, and we just need to make sure we get it right. And so uh, I think replay to make sure before we take a half or a game away from a player, let's, let's make sure we get it right because they work really hard for those opportunities. Gentlemen, always a pleasure to see you. I wish you nothing but the best, Coach, especially for your little ones, by the way. Thank you very much. That's cool to see. Gentlemen, thanks, thanks for having us. All thank right, good to have you here. Coming up next, we'll talk to Butch Davis and FIU as we continue Conference USA Media Day.